All right, let's dive into a classic command line showdown, curl versus wget. Now on the surface, they both seem to do the same thing, right? They grab stuff from the internet. But trust me, they are built for fundamentally different jobs, and knowing when to use which can make your life a whole lot easier. You know, this whole explainer was sparked by this one simple question, and it's a good one. It's something you've probably asked yourself when you see one command in a tutorial and a different one in a script. You start to wonder, does it really matter which one I use? And that really is the million dollar question, isn't it? Are they interchangeable? Well, spoiler alert, not really. The truth is, they're designed with completely different philosophies. Think of one as a precision instrument, a scalpel, and the other as a tireless workhorse. Let's break them down. Okay, first up is curl. Now, the most important thing to get about curl is this, libcurl. See, curl isn't just a command line tool. It's the front end for this incredibly popular library that powers data transfer in thousands of apps, from cars to TVs to, well, probably your phone. This means curl's very DNA is all about being a super flexible part of a bigger system. See, pay close attention to the wording here, transferring data. It doesn't say downloading, it says transferring, and that is a huge distinction. Transfer implies a two-way street, right? Sending and receiving. And that is exactly where curl absolutely shines. So the bottom line is curl can both send and receive data. This is so critical for things like API calls, where you're sending requests and getting data back. And just look at that protocol support. I mean, we're talking about everything from the web with HTTP to file transfers with FTP and SCP, and you can even use it for email with SMTP. It's wild. In its simplest form, yeah, you can use curl to just grab a web page. So in this example, we're just telling curl, hey, go fetch the HTML from this URL, and that little dash O flag says, and save it to a file called tutorial.html. Super simple, super effective. But this, this is where you see the true spirit of curl. It is an absolute favorite for automation and scripting. This one-liner is everywhere. It's using curl to download a script from the internet and then immediately pipes it into bash to run. This is the magic behind so many of those quick install commands you see online. Those flags, FSSL, they aren't just random letters. They're a recipe for a reliable script. You're telling it, fail fast if there's a server error, be silent so you don't get a bunch of junk in your terminal, but do show an error if it actually fails, follow any redirects. It's this combination that makes these kinds of scripts so robust. And then we have wget. Its entire purpose is right there in the name. It's short for webget. It was designed from day one to be a simple, non-interactive tool for just downloading files, especially lots of them. Its absolute superpower, crawling a website and downloading everything recursively to create a perfect offline copy. This right here is wget's signature move. This is its home turf. With just this one command, you're telling it to mirror an entire website. The M flag is the magic mirror shortcut. P tells it to grab all the page requisites, you know, images, style sheets, the works. And K smartly converts all the links so you can browse the site locally offline. You just, you can't do this with curl. It's not what it's for. And this is exactly why we call it the workhorse. Your network connection dropped during a massive 10 gigabyte download? No problem. The C flag lets you continue right where you left off. Need to download a huge file but don't want to hog all the bandwidth? You can limit the rate. Just want to see if a link is even valid without downloading anything? Use the spider option. It is truly built for reliability on those long, tough jobs. And hey, you don't have to take my word for it. This is a quote from Daniel Stenberg, the guy who actually created Curl. Even he says that wget's major strength is its ability to download recursively. But then he says, for just about everything else, curl is probably the more suitable tool. That pretty much sums it up. So all of this brings us back to the most important question. Which one should you actually use? Well, as it almost always is, the answer is, it depends entirely on the job you're trying to do. So in the end, it really all boils down to your goal. If you just need to download a file, or especially a whole website, and you want it to be robust, wget is your champion, no question. But for pretty much everything else, testing an API, sending data, scripting complex transfers with weird protocols, curl is the tool you're going to need. So there you have it. They are definitely not interchangeable. They are two incredibly powerful tools designed for two very different jobs. One is a master of versatility and interaction, the other is an absolute champion of reliable downloading. The real power comes from knowing which one to pick for the job at hand. I know that you will enjoy another Linux video like this one here. 
Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.